What's going on guys? My name is Eric. Welcome back to the channel. Well, we're finally starting to do some home projects and I think this is a pretty simple home project that we've got. Uh, we got a Richmond 40 gallon electric water heater. The, sorry about the gum in my mouth. The model number here says it is 6EM40-D. So I already know this is a 40 gallon water heater. And the add node rod, when I looked up uh, the user manual for it, the add node rod is right up here towards the front. Right here towards where the electric kind of comes in here. Now, my basement here only has about seven foot ceilings and it's about six and a half to the rafters right here to where the, the ground floor is. So I really don't have really a whole lot of room here to go uh, to go about this. Now, there's a bunch of theories on taking the annual rod out if you should replace it or if you just cut it off and use the plug and put it back in or if you should get a different type of uh, annual rod. The one that comes in this is magnesium, and I've looked around and searched on the internet for a little while. I looked at I looked at aluminum ones with the zinc. Uh, if there's zinc plated, it's supposed to not give the sulfur oxide, which the the minerals that are in the water kind of react to. They give you that kind of the sulfur smell, or some people may call it a rotten egg smell. I've got it pretty bad here in my house, so that's why I'm going to take the annual rod out and I'm going to replace it. I got you see, I got some tools over here. I'm going to replace it with this, I don't know how well this is coming up here on the on the cam here, so I'm going to come up here. This is a Coral Pro Tech. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. It's an electric add node rod. I'm going to kind of bring it right up here. I paid, I paid a pretty penny for this thing. Like, at the time of this is January 3rd of 2023, I paid $149. And this is quite a bit of money for this. You guys know inflation, all that sort of stuff is kind of playing a part here. But it's supposed to not, it's supposed to use electricity to interact with the minerals that are in the water heater here instead of using the zinc or the aluminum or the magnesium to attract those minerals and to give off the, uh, the that byproduct, which is car, uh, sulfur monoxide. I think that's what it is, sulfur uh, monoxide. It could be dioxide. I don't really know. I'll put, a, I'll put a thing up here that gives some kind of sort of description on how all this goes. Um, he goes into a bunch of theory and the science behind all, how you get that sulfur smell. It's a pretty good read, it, way more than I do. But for this particular Richmond water here, we're going to go ahead and get this in. So you're going to have this. You can find this right on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description down below if you want to purchase this. I'll have this. Also, I've got some vice grips here um, because I'm thinking here since I've only from... I've only got 24 inches of room here. Uh, from the bottom of this floor joist here to here is only 24 inches. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to clamp it on here, grow out. I, I didn't grab a saw here, but we're probably going to have to saw it off and then take the rest of it up and out. But we're going to go ahead and see how this add node rod is. First off, we also have a, uh, a DeWalt 1 and 1 16th inch uh, impact driver now. I bought impacts, and I'll kind of get into this here a little bit, a little bit later. But this is one you're going to need to get the add node rod out. And then I also bought a 31 millimeter half inch drive uh, socket here to put for this guy to go back in. This was a 31 millimeter, so you're going to need this to reinstall this back in here. Now I probably should have brought some uh, some plumber's tape to put on here, so water doesn't kind of weep back up and out of the hole here, but I have some here. We'll go ahead and put that back in uh, on the threads, and we'll go ahead and put it right back down in here. And also, you are going to need a half-inch drive ratchet with a breaker bar, which, again, got to go back outside, get a breaker bar. Last, and certainly not least, is probably the first thing you're going to get is just a flat screwdriver. Um, some, a flat-headed screwdriver, not a, not a Phillips end, because so you because this little plastic thing here, when I bring you up to here, there's a plastic liner in here. You're going to have to pop it out and inspect that. So, guys, I'm going to bring the camera right over here, and we'll get started. So, as you guys can see here, here's where the add node rod is. It has a little plastic cover on here, which we're going to reuse that plastic cover. But first, I'm going to have to go ahead and pry this out, and it'll expose the nut here so we can get one of those, that 1 and 1 16th inch impact driver, put it on here, and to get it out. Let's go ahead and get started. And just work your way, 
when you get underneath here, just kind of work your way around here. Don't know how well it's coming up here on the camera. I'm probably blocking it. It's probably what it is. Let's see if we can at least start getting it up out of here. All I'm really doing is I'm just working it on here. I'm not really trying to pry anything, trying to break the plastic or anything. Just trying to get it up and out of here. See if we can start breaking this away here. Ooh, it's coming. There we go. Now, as you can see, don't be surprised if you see some of this um, packing in here. It's gonna the nuts underneath here. You're just gonna have to chip away at this and expose the nut. But I just seen that I should have shut off my water heater even before I worked on here because I had the possibility of elect electrocuting myself and. Come way up here. I got a water shut off here. I probably should have shut the water off here too. So let me do those two things and then we'll kind of get right back into here. All right, shut the electric water heater, cut cut the breaker. Pow, blah, blah. Let's try this one more time. I cut the breaker power to the water heater so we're safe there. I also, right up here, you, you don't see here on these kind of um, these lines here. There's a water shut off valve. I shut the water off to that. Now I'm just going to kind of come in here and kind of pry in here. Um, to get this out of here so it exposes that nut. See if I can get out of the uh, get out of the light here for you. Oh, this guy's down in here for sure. How far down in this thing goes? My man, that is way down in there. You guys probably aren't going to see the nut. Let's get some of this out of the way here. And that is deep inside. Sorry about getting in the light here, guys. But let me go ahead and get this out of the way here, and then we'll get on from here. Guys, they do not want you to get to this adenone rod. I had to dig through probably three to four inches to get even to the top of the nut. And as you can tell, it's kind of way down in there. But we'll get her out. And of course, just as I get ready to record, the furnace turns on, but that's all right. I was being a little bit overzealous there on just the camera here a little bit. It's being a little bit overzealous. Just about three inches, two and a half, three inches I had to kind of burrow through just to get to the top of the of the nut here. But just to let you guys know, these guys, they don't want you to get to the add node rod. All right here guys, got a half inch extension here. Gonna put her on, see if we can't do this without a breaker bar first. Okay, here we go. Man! Ooh! Whoa, buddy. Gonna need a breaker bar, that's for sure. We can slip around. I think I'm gonna need a breaker bar. Let me go get one. Well, I went ahead and got a good size breaker bar. 
Now, before I get start reefing in on this thing, I want to I want to do a little bit of a disclaimer here. When I looked inside here, it looked like a plastic nut on uh, another plastic something that had, that holds the anode rod in here. So I hope with me reefing on this thing, it's not snapping the. I hope to God I'm not snapping the the nut off here. Because if it does, well, then the anode rod staying in here forever then. Because I'm not going to be able to dig that dig that thing out. I'm not going to take everything off just to find the anode rod here in the bottom of the um in the bottom of the water tank here. So crossing our fingers here, guys. Hopefully that's hopefully that's steel and not um. Hopefully it's sealing that plastic, so here we go. Should be able to get it here on the first pull. Wow, I'm moving the whole entire tank. Wow, that thing is in there tight. I don't know if you guys can see that, but even with all this water in here for how heavy this is, when I pulled on that, I just moved the whole entire water tank. Not something that I was expecting, I'll tell you that. Uh, but I might have to bring a, another body over here to hold on to this thing while I'm kind of reefing on this thing to break this loose. So, not what I was expecting, I'll tell you that. Not what I was expecting. So. Guys, this will be the end of part one here. Part two, I'll have someone coming over for us to hold on to this water tank so we can so we can get the add node rod out here. I was hoping to get all this done today, get it all said and done, but apparently that's not going to happen. Um, I hope the sound was okay, everything else. Let me know what you guys think kind of down in the comments here. Did I do something wrong? Did I? Now I'm just kind of yelling here so you guys can pick me up over the, uh, over the furnace, which is right over here. Let me kind of know down in the comments what you guys would have done. Now, I know some of you guys are probably going to say, even before the, the, I end this video, is why did I not use an impact to take this off? Well, my fear is if it's corroded like corroded bad like I would I think it is, when I start hitting this thing with the impact and if it comes loose, even the water in here is not going to stop it from spinning. It's going to hit the outside or the inside of this tank and it's going to damage the tank and hopefully not accelerate the rot here that the minerals do to these water heaters. So I want to minimize that as much as I can. Now, do I have an impact? Yes, I do have one, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to risk damaging the outside of this Richmond water heater um, just to get the anode rod out of here and do the sulfur smell. So I'm going to go, <laughs> going to make a few phone calls, going to get some help over here. Might be doing it the same day, but for you guys, it'll be a part two, but let me know what you guys kind of think down in the comments. What would you would have done differently? Um, did I do everything correctly? Did I not do something right? Let me know down in the comments, guys. I know you guys will be able to put it. Put a thumbs up if you like this video. Give it a thumbs down if you do not. And also, guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button because you're going to see more videos just like this all over the place. So make sure you hit the notification bell and make sure you hit all so you get all videos from me so you get more videos just like this one. All right, guys, I'll see you in part two. Hope you really guys enjoy this video. Hope to see you guys again soon. Deuces. Take care, guys.